Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today, we are going to be justifying the steps of a solution using the different properties that we've learned. It is another way of just saying we're doing an algebraic proof, but this way sounds a lot nicer, doesn't it? Just using the stuff we've learned. All right, so here's the full solution of an expression. We have this expression up here, 2 times x plus 3 minus 16y plus 5 times x minus 2. And that's what we've been asked to solve. So the first step, if you're given the information, you would just write given. Then we look at, from the first step to the second step, what has changed? What have we done? Well, this didn't change, the 5 times 2 for y plus 2. 16y, negative 16y there didn't change. But this whole section did. What happened was we multiplied 2 times x and 2 times 3. 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6. And that is called the distributive property. We distributed that 2 to each term inside of the parentheses. So that's what changed between step 1 and 2. So that's what we write down as our justification for that step. The next step here, we actually distribute it again. None of the first bunch changed, but we distributed the 5 times y and 5 times 2 from this step to this step. And so we would say, again, we use the distributive property. Now, when we move from step 3 to step 4, you'll notice a couple things change. One, um, the 6 moves to the very end. Everything else pretty much just stays the same. The negative 16y shifts, the 5y shifts, the 10 shifts. But this positive 6 goes to the end. And what is that property when you move things around? You commute them from one place to another. That's the commutative property. So that would be the justification for this step. Then in this step, next step, the second to last one here, um, we've added negative 16y plus 5y to get negative 11y. So we'll just call that addition, because that's all we've done, really. We just added these two terms. And then in the last step, we add 10 plus 6 to get 16. So we'll just call that one addition again. So that's the justification using our properties that we've learned for each step of solving this expression. In this next question, we're actually going to solve the expression that we're given. It's a little bit more complicated, but basically the same. We're going to solve this expression, and we're going to share our justification for each step. In other words, we're going to say which property we use for each step. The first step in solving this is that we would look at the entire expression and say, according to the order of operations, what do I do first? Well, the first thing I come to is this here, this minus x plus 2. This is actually kind of a tricky one. That negative is distributed or multiplied times each term inside the parentheses, it becomes negative x and negative 2. All right? Oh, sorry. This expression was given. I didn't say that. But you see here that this negative gets distributed to the x and to the 2. It becomes negative x, negative 2. And that, because we are distributing and multiplying, that will be the distributive property. The next step of our solution is another distribu distribution where we take this negative 3x and multiply that times each term inside the parentheses. There's a lot of negatives in this one. Negative 3x times negative or times positive 2y will give us a negative 6xy. And negative 3x times 6 will give us negative 18x. All right, so that's going to be the next step. And again, we used the distribution. We distributed that negative 3x to each term in the parentheses. So that's going to be the distri distributive property. In our next step, um, we're going to move the x's to the front, the x, y in the middle, and then all the numbers to the, to the far right. Okay, the number or the x's come up front here. And when we move things around, we move them with their term, like this negative x stayed pretty much the same, but negative 18x actually moved over to here with the negative. And that's called the commutative property. Again, we're commuting things from one place to another, moving them around. So that's going to be the commutative property. And then the next step here, I actually just 
uh, join these together, negative 18x minus x will give us negative 19x. What we're doing there, we're joining together like terms. That could be what you would call this. You could say joining like terms. You could say we're adding. We're adding negative 18x plus negative x together. Or you can just say we're subtracting. All right, any of those would be fine at this point for what um, this property is. And everything else remained the same. For the next step, I'm going to do something a little different. I notice I have a 4 and a minus 4. Well, 4 minus 4, instead of doing negative 2 plus 4 and then subtracting 4, I'm going to move, I'm going to do it in a different order. So I'm going to do 4 minus 4 first. Whenever you put parentheses around the outside of two numbers, and you join those ones together first. That's called the associative property. The associative property of addition, you can add in any order. And this is like 4 plus negative 4. All right, so it's still the associative property. Um, and then what we have here is, well, we just solved 4 minus 4 is 0. So that was just, we'll just call that one subtraction for now. And then we added together negative 2 plus 0 to leave us with negative 2. So those are the steps for solving each of each step of this expression. It's kind of a long expression, and it ends up with three terms at the end that you can't join together because they're not exactly alike. And here are all the properties that we used in solving this expression. So I hope that this has been helpful in justifying the steps of solving an expression or in other words, doing an algebraic proof. I hope that's been helpful for you, and have a wonderful